Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 58. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link directly below the video and you can and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section and you can download this. Now this is a video, this is a workbook for chapter 6 and it's the third file posted. Ah, this video we have an important topic. We need to talk about cash flows and tax rates. And we'll use this idea throughout the rest of the class. Now, in uh, chapter six, we're talking about interest on bonds. So we're going to talk about interest earned and taxes. And then in our next example, we'll talk about interest expense and the tax implication. Now, let's look at a simple example. We'll say our period interest rate is five. And we'll just do an annual rate. We're getting paid annual interest. We'll say the face value is $100, to make it simple. Right, so you you're happy because you're the bond holder, right? And you're going to earn some interest called interest revenue. So our calculation would be 100 times that uh, period rate, five bucks. Now this is a cash in. You like that, right? You're the bond holder, so this cash is coming in. But uh oh, there is a uh, tax rate, and whatever your marginal tax rate. Uh, is that's what you will use so your tax rate is 25 so oops this is cash coming in so you have to list it on your tax return as a revenue right so <coughs> if that is a cash in you have to pay some tax on it so that times this now we can see this is a cash out so anytime you see interest revenue or any cash coming in that has a that's going to be listed on your tax return, you have to think about the tax rate because there ultimately is going to be some cash going out. Well, figuring our net cash in is easy. We simply take our $5 of revenue minus our uh, $1.25 tax expense or deduction. So that's our net cash in. And that's very important um, as we go through the rest of the class because finance people are always looking at cash flows and if you're looking internally you need to uh, in the company you know you know your tax rate so you can go ahead and calculate the actual cash flow in this case it's a total cash in now we don't want to usually do all of these calculations to come to our net cash flow in so here's how we do it without doing all these steps well we know our face value or principal and we know our interest rate now, that would give us the five bucks, all right? If we enter that, it gives us a five bucks. So I'm going to hit F2. Really what we're after is um, five minus this. Well, guess what? In this class, we have seen one plus some interest rate. And that usually is going forward into the future. But guess what? Here, we can go one, which is the principal amount, um, minus, not plus, our tax rate. So what this is doing, it's saying, uh, take this 5, and the 5 will be the principal, minus this tax rate. So we've seen this many times in this class. But this, I think this is the first time we've seen 1 minus. No problem. That'll give us our answer. So again, we take, that, that's just the 5 bucks, right? If I hit F9, you can see it's 5. And we take the 5, since this is the principal. That would be 1 times 5 is the whole 5. And 5 times that 25% is 1.25. We get our the correct amount. All right, now, this is for the cash flow. But um, throughout the textbook, we'll also have to calculate the net interest rate. And that's just, hey, take your 5% times, and then 1 minus your tax rate. And there you go, there's your net tax rate. That's 0 0.0375, so we could actually calculate, um, now we have a net interest rate. And actually, we might calculate this instead of our 5% our for our input rate later when we're doing cash flows. But now we can just say, hey, this um, principal or face amount times our net interest rate, which is really what we did here anyway. But here's just explicitly showing it in the cell. Now, for the person on the other side of this transaction, they still have a 5%. They still have the $100. But this is going to be cash out. So when they do their expense, now this is cash out. Tax rate, 25, or whatever it is. Whoops. Right? Obviously, these two people would have different 
uh, tax rates the, on either side of the transaction, or perhaps they had the same, but to show that we get the same actual uh, number with a different cash flow, meaning going out, we'll use the same tax rate. All right, to, um, however, we're going to list this um, expense right here on our tax return, and that means it's a deduction. So this will allow us uh, a tax avoided because of deduction. So we simply say this times our 25%. And then our net cash out is this, right? Same basic calculations we did on the revenue side, but now it's on the expense side. So really, when we make this calculation, we need to realize that really there's only $3.75 net cash going out. Again, we can do the same thing. We can say uh, the 100 times our rate times 1 minus our tax rate. I can see I did a 8 instead of a multiplication. And then finally, again, it's important oftentimes just to take your tax rate times 1 minus, sorry, take your interest rate times 1 minus your tax rate. And that gives you the net interest rate. All right, we'll see you next video.